Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Wednesday, April 8th, How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell. Yesterday, when we read, Billy ate his first worm, and then he pretended to act like he was basically going crazy. And his friends, Tom and Joe and Alan, were all afraid that um, the worm actually made him sick. Let's continue. We're on Chapter 5, The Gathering Storm. Alan and Joe stopped in the orchard by the pile of fresh dirt. You think you'll be able to do it? asked Alan. I don't know, said Joe. He can't do it, said Alan. How could anybody eat 15 worms? My father will kill me. Fifty dollars? He ate that one awful easy. Forget it, said Joe. If he doesn't give up himself, I'll figure something out. We could spike the next worm with pepper. He'd eat one piece and then another talking to Tom, then all of a sudden, choo, he'd sneeze. Then he'd sneeze again. A faint look of panic would creep over his face, and he'd begin to wonder if he'll ever stop sneezing. He'll clutch his stomach. His eyes will begin to water. Hachoo! Hachoo! I don't know. Billy's awfully stubborn, said Alan. Even if it was killing him, he might not give up. Hachoo! Hachoo! cried Joe. He falls to the floor. I bend over him. Call his mother. It's the triglycerosis. And his eyes look up at me. Remember that business last summer, said Alan, when it was 95 degrees in the shade, and I dared Billy to put on all of his winter clothes and his father's raccoon coat and ski boots and walk up and down Main Street all afternoon? They went off through the orchard. Joe, still pretending to sneeze and sighing and rolling his eyes, pretending as if he was Billy suffering from one dose of peppered worm. I feel like Joe's a little bit dramatic. I'm not sure here. Alan moaning to himself about how stubborn Billy would be. Fifty dollars. Chapter six, the second worm. <sighs> Billy sighed. On the plate before him lay the last bite of worm under a daub of ketchup and mustard. What's the matter, asked Tom. I don't know, sighed Billy. He picked up the fork again. Does it taste bad? No, said Billy wearily. I just taste ketchup and mustard mostly. But it makes me feel sort of sick, even before I eat it. Ugh, just thinking about it. <sighs> he sighed again and then glanced at Joe and Alan, talking to each other in whispers over by the window. What are you whispering about? Nothing. Well, then what are you whispering for? Nothing. It's not important. Just something Joe's father told him last night. What? Come on, finish up. It was nothing. We'll miss the cartoons. Billy shut his eyes and popped the last piece of worm into his mouth. Chewed, gagged, Clapped his hands over his mouth. Ah! Gulp, gulp. Toppled backward in the orange crate, sprawling on his back, and he gazed peacefully up at the ceiling. Joe and Alan stood over him and said, Open up. Billy opened his mouth. Wider. Do you see any, Joe? Nah, he swallowed it. Okay, let's go. That was another short chapter. We're on chapter seven. Red crash helmets and white jumpsuits. After the movies, Tom walked home with Billy. Tomorrow, I'll roll the night crawler in cornmeal and fry it. Kind of like fish. It's not really the taste, said Billy. It's more the thought of what I'm doing. When I start to eat it, even though it's smothered in ketchup and mustard and grated cheese, I can't stop thinking worm. Worm, 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 worm. Gaggles of worms in bait boxes. Drowned worms that have come up from the ground on a rainy day, drying on sidewalks. A worm squirming as the fish hook gores into him. The soggy end of a worm dangling out of a dead fish's mouth. Robins yanking worms out of a lawn. I can't stop thinking worm. Yeah, but if I fry it in cornmeal, it won't look like a crawler, said Tom. I'll put parsley around it and some slices of lemon. 
And then you can concentrate and think, fish. All the time you're waiting in the barn, all the time you're eating it, keep saying to yourself, fish, 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 fish. Here I am eating good fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini bike to the church. Tuna, haddock, trout. Wait until you hear the minister shout. Fish, 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 fish. Shark, haddock, sucker, eel. I'll race my father in an automobile. Eel, flounder, bluegill, shark. We'll race all day till after dark. Billy cheered up. Think how they'd all stare. I'd rub up the aisle, vroom, vroom, around the front pews, down a side aisle under the stained glass windows. My parents would kill me. Reverend Yarder would peer down over the Bible and say, William, William, you take that engine thing out of here right this minute. Yeah, and then they'd come chasing after us, said Tom. Billy laughed, waving their arms and yelling. We'd lead, the, lead them zigzag around and round and in and out of the gravestones and monuments in the cemetery and then roar off down the Sandgate Road, leaving them draped over tombs, panting and shaking their fists. And that Monday, we'd smuggle it into class disguised as Raymond Dwelly. And then when Millie Butter said anything, anything at all, even something like excuse me or sniffed, we dump a whole bottle of ink over her head and run for the coat closet, overturning chairs and desks behind us to slow up Mrs. Howard. She'd come after us, fuming and shouting threats. Suddenly, the doors of the cloak closet would open, and we'd roar out vroom vroom on the mini bike in our blood red crash helmets and our white jumpsuits, our scars streaming behind us, and we'd roar around and round the classroom while Mrs. Howard knelt among the overturned desks and chairs, sobbing helplessly in her hands. And then room, room out the door and up the hall, thumbing our noses at the hall monitors, brackety, brackety, brack up the stairs, stiff-arming tacklers into Mr. Simmons' office, riding up onto his desk, room, room, a backfire into his face, and zoom out the window as he topples backward in his chair, in a hurricane of quiz papers and report cards. And then crunch, landing on the school driveway, we'd roar off down the highway to Bennington and join the Navy so Mrs. Howard and Mr. Simmons and our parents can't punish us for all we did. Imagine that, boys and girls. That's some crazy imagination they have. All because of this mini bike that Billy's hoping to buy with his $50 that he earns. Chapter 8, The Third Worm Tom ran out of the kitchen of Billy's house, holding the sizzling frying pan out in front of him with both hands, the screen door banging behind him. Alan threw open the barn door when he saw him coming. Tom thumped the frying pan down on the orange crate. There, he said breathlessly, done to a tea. Look at her, all golden brown and sizzling. It looks good enough to eat. Yeah, said Billy, and he poked the worm with his fork. Tom took off the potholder glove that he was wearing. Remember, think fish. Think fish, Billy. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my bindi bike into church. Eel, salmon, bluegill, trout. Wait till you hear the minister shout. He leaned over Billy and whispered into his ear. Fish, 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 fish. Go on, take a bite. Fish. Okay, second bite. Fish, fish, fish. And boys and girls, chapter nine is very short. So we'll do chapter nine, and I think we'll stop for today. I'm scared I'm going to leave you hanging. Chapter nine is called The Plotters. Geez, you think it'll work, said Alan to Joe? Suppose it doesn't. He didn't seem to pay much attention today. Don't worry, said Joe. We got him thinking. It takes time. It got it all, I, I'm sorry, I got it all doped out. Trust me. We're going to stop here for today. Chapter 10 is called The Fourth Worm. And we'll continue next Tuesday, April 14th, after spring break. Have a great day, everyone.
Goodbye.